you were about to enter. Chuck versus the podcast. The only show that takes you behind the scenes with the stars. Yvonne Strahovski. Zachary Levi. Joshua Gomez. Ryan McPartland. Adam Balba. Sarah Lancaster. Contests. We are giving away a Chuck press kit. The directors. Jason Enzo. Norman Buckley. The guest stars. Steve Austin. Kristen Griff. Conventions. Lights come up and here comes Jester out on stage. Set visits. This is the guy right here. And much more. Are you ready? This is Mel. This is Liz. And we want to welcome you to Chuck versus the Podcast number 87 for Friday, April 22nd, 2011. Gray is boldly working on a new project with William Shatner. So it's just us girls this week. We're going to be talking about fathers and daughters and weddings and cons. But first, the news. Absolutely. Well, according to the Fast Overnights and Ratings News, Chuck vs. Wedding Planner remained low at 1.3 in the 18 to 49 demo, adult demo, which is unchanged from last week. Um, approximately 4.2 million viewers tuned in, just up, uh, just a smidge from last week. NBC's other Monday shows, the event in Law and Order LA, both dropped to 1.1 in the demo. Yeah, I'm thinking oh. that I'm going to have to just delete my event, you know, episodes that I haven't watched yet. Yeah, that's that's bye bye. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking. Too bad. Yeah, I know. I like seeing Blair Underwood on my screen, but I mm -hmm. didn't really care for the event. So, yeah. Um, it, the, the, the rate, the ratings aren't great, but some fans have been pulling together some renewal, uh, efforts. We give a check did a new Twitter campaign this week where they had, they used the hashtag not a Nielsen family. And then the fans, uh, tweeted the various sponsors when we saw a commercial or a product placement like super shuttle, um, Toyota, uh, ConAgra for Pam, Stouffer's, uh, Diet Pepsi. And a lot of them were responding. They, some yeah. of them were responding on Monday night and then others on Tuesday when, you know, they got to the office and they were like, oh my gosh, we love you, Chuck fans. This is great. <laughs> so it clearly made an impact. And you don't have to, I mean, if you, if you missed trying to do it on Monday night while we were watching the show, we encourage you to do it now anyway. Um, just send them a quick tweet that says, saw your ad on Chuck. Thanks for supporting or I buy your product or I, you know, I love the ad, whatever, just something because they are reading them. And uh, be sure to also put at NBC in your tweet so that they see it as well. But that was a pretty successful one. So Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I was watching all those responses come in. And it was pretty exciting. Yeah. I, they were pretty shocked, I think. I think they were. They didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah. So that was, yeah, it was a very, very positive response from the advertisers. So um, kudos to We Give a Check for coming up with that. That's uh, WeGiveACheck.com is where you can find details proving once again how smart Chuck fans really are. That's right. Well, everything else that was posted in the news section, aside from this week's fashion update, is uh, spoiler stuff. So we'll have to wait for that uh, later in this episode. So for now, let's get to talking about Chuck versus the Wedding Planner. I think maybe the best episode of the season and definitely in my top five overall. Yeah, I think so. It was. It had everything going for it. It had um, the emotional as the emotional roller coaster as far as the cuteness factor and um, touching, heartwarming, heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, I don't and and suspense. A little bit of suspense. I don't know for you, but for me, I was really chewing my nails about um, Kathleen finding out oh, yeah. that. Casey was alive mm -hmm. and what he was doing. I thought, oh no, don't let her walk away without her knowing. I know. Did I did not expect her to be all. You've been lying to Alex. You need to tell her the truth. You're no hero. Yeah. I, that's. I'm so used to seeing Casey as a hero. I guess. But. And and I really thought that it it would have been it would have been so um, unjust for Casey because he is indeed a hero, mm -hmm. a, a big one. And I just would hate to have seen that um, be tossed by the wayside, you know. So the way it ended, I know that we're, we're skipping around and we're already at the end of the episode, but the way it ended with her actually seeing him flash his badge. And, I love that. Yeah. What a way. Really, I think for her, it had to be that way. She had to see it for yeah. herself. Otherwise, him saying it, she wouldn't have believed it. That's a good point. Yeah. It gave me goosebumps, though, when he flipped the badge, Colonel John Casey, NSA. 
Yeah. And then you look, they pan over and she's in the car watching. Wow. Yeah. Well done. Now this is another Le Judkins, Lauren LaFranc and Rafe Judkins show, um, mm-hmm. episode. And they just continue to impress. Um, just, oh my gosh, firing on all cylinders. Gary Cole, back in the fold, did a tremendous job. Um, in, in the flashbacks and in present day, uh, was getting, I was enjoying seeing him in his, uh, members only jacket back in yeah. the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and how about that little thing with the, the, uh, piggy bank? How that cute was, was so that? Sweet. And it was such a, an affirmation for Sarah that her father loved her. He was, he's been thinking about her and, uh, and, wanting to do something for her you know he didn't steal her money he'd just been adding to it and now he's able to pay for their wedding yeah which is so very traditional for sarah's untraditional history Mm -hmm. that her father's paying for the wedding yeah i i'd like to have a piggy bank like that right now (laughs) me too (laughs) yeah (laughs) but you know um i just thought it was really sweet how um sarah just kind of accepted the way her dad was, you know, Mm -hmm. as far as how he would just drift in and out of her life. Mm -hmm. She had gotten so used to it. And I, I, you know, she, it could have gone one of two ways. She ended up where she, where we saw her, where she just totally loved him no matter what, that unconditional love, or she could have hated him and said, you know what, you, I never knew when you were coming or going. I never knew when you came home, if you were going to stay or how long you were going to stay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I just don't want you part of my life at all. Forget it. Goodbye. See you later. Yeah. You know, but it, it, it didn't go that way. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I don't know if that's part of her character, how she's accepting of, she's willing to, to look at the other side of a, of a bad coin mm-hmm. and say, well, okay, I see this this nasty person or I see these bad qualities, but what about if we turn this over? What, what else is going on? What's underneath all that? And she's, she can accept things like that. So I don't know, maybe I'm way off base, but I think you're on track there. And, but I think part of it is also that so much of the damage that we've seen from Sarah, especially in the first two and a half seasons of this, of the show is because of her, I think because of the way that she grew up with her father and she didn't see it as bad necessarily, but it trained her to not form attachments to accept that people leave. Um, and she's a little sad about it. You know, she was a little sad that her dad left without saying goodbye until she got that really lovely note in the piggy bank. You could tell that it hurt her a little bit, but she was accepting of it because that's just the way he is. Yeah. And, you know, and she didn't want to invite him to the wedding. She didn't want him to know anything about that. She didn't want him to be a part of that part of her life. Um, So I think there's some hurt there still. But like you said, she is, you know, it's still unconditional love. Um, She adores him. You could see when she was a little girl, she just practically hero worshipped him. You know, she wanted to go on those adventures and was happy to sell Girl Scout cookies (laughs) by the truckload. Um, How cute was she? (laughs) <laughs> she oh, was adorable. adorable. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So. Great acting from that, that little actress mm-hmm. there. It's cute. But, you know, you speaking know, of those flashbacks, we saw her grandmother. Yeah. And we got, we know that her grandmother's not happy with Jack uh, and the way that he's been with, you know, the, uh, possibly the way he's treating Sarah, but more than that. I mean, they did have a fight about Sarah, but, um, or Jenny or whatever her name was at the time. You'll notice that they did not use the first name when she was a little girl. Mm, I did. <laughs> yeah. um, but there, the so her mom's already out of the picture at this point. So what what did her mother do that Sarah is in no contact with her compared yeah. to her father, the con man who keeps leaving to go, you know, con, you know, do a grift and. And she adores him. I'm completely, I have, I have no idea. I cannot fathom what Sarah's mother must be or do that has her father, the good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Odd that, I, I, um, I don't know. There's been some speculation that her mother's in the mafia and that her father 
was pulling a con and and you know and it went bad but i which could be i mean this is check that could happen mm -hmm. but i'm just i i don't quite buy into that i don't know i hope we get a fifth season so we can find out yeah it would be great yeah <clears throat> you know i know that sarah didn't invite him to the wedding and he was talking he doesn't want to be there and everything but i just wonder if if he, if we do get to see Jack one more time, he's maybe not a part of the wedding, but he's maybe standing off watching, like, yeah. much like Bryce Larkin mm -hmm. when he was watching, you know, at Ellie's wedding. Yeah. I just wonder if we'll see something like that. Or well, maybe we, it's just... We got the father-daughter dance. Did you notice that? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was really a sweet way to insert that because he wasn't going to be at the wedding. Mm -hmm. So they got their father-daughter dance anyway. Yeah, but I just wonder if he'll be able to keep away completely. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So, anyway, so uh, what else happened? We well, had, Sarah um, tried to show Chuck what he looks like when he flashes. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked pretty uh, unhappy that that's what his face looked like. <laughs> Or puzzled. What the heck are you doing? Do yes. I really look like that? Yes, you do, Jack. Yes, you do. <laughs> I just, and the way that Yvonne did it, you know, it was like, well, it's kind of like, you know, and she does it and she's like, yeah, you know, this little shrug, like, you know, like that. <laughs> oh, it was adorable. Brilliant. Yeah. We have somebody, uh, Bikini Girl 3, she's in the chat rooms on Monday nights with us. She grabbed it and made a GIF. And so I had to post that on the website <laughs> just for kicks. It was too funny. Oh, it was hilarious. Hilarious. And she also got to get her Jersey accent on. Yeah. That was pretty good. <laughs> I was impressed. She did it well. Yep. Yeah. Um, so. What did you think about that scene in the super shuttle? With, <clears throat> with Chuck and the really awful fake beard. I mean... That Wasn't that horrible? He, he looked like a terrorist. He did. <laughs> I know. What was he thinking? I don't know, but it was hilarious. I thought it was so funny. And you know what got me was that everybody else on the shuttle was just like looking at all this going on as if it was totally normal. I, like they, that girl they on the cell phone. <laughs> oh, now there's this guy. He's totally exposing himself to this other woman. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, how brilliant was Daphne, though? That is her name, right? Yeah. Did I get that right? Okay. Well, for, for that con, yes, that was her name. <laughs> she came highly recommended by the internet. Yeah. yeah. She's and, uh, brilliant work, brilliant work, turning the tables on them like that. Oh, yeah. Conning a CIA, two CIA agents, and one of them is the daughter of a con man. Yeah. I can understand why Sarah was upset. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. But, and then her dad's reaction, she's like, he she totally took me. He's like, what? <laughs> he was so disappointed. I know. <laughs> and she was too. She's like, I'm sorry, dad. <laughs> totally got me. He taught her so well. I know. Uh -huh. But can we talk about the wedding plans for a minute? Okay. Red and black? Are there colors? Yeah. Really? Really? Red and black. And with Helvetica font? Kudos to Morgan for pointing out the obvious. A little uh, socialist. A little SS <laughs> going on. <laughs> well, you know, I could see I could see red and black looking classy. It depends. I mean it would be if it's a formal nighttime wedding, it would that be yeah, work. It would be totally formal. Um, you know, the the guys would have to be in full tux mm -hmm. and not, you know, yeah, I guess I just always pictured it more like a beach wedding, you know, because yeah. the beach has so many special memories for them, you know, and they're kind of, they're not exactly a formal couple. I mean, they get to dress up in formal wear a lot, mm -hmm. but not just for missions, not because they really are those people. Yeah, well, um, I know, but then again, it would be a repeat because true. Ellie, Ellie and Devin's wedding was on the beach and... And Ellie is the one that's doing a lot of the planning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, so mm. I don't know. Well, I suspect that those are no longer the colors for the wedding. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
Um, anything else? Um, well, we had the- we had Jack conning Devin and teaching Clara the shell game. We put the little quarter under her bottle, you know. He's trying to teach her the shell game. <laughs> It's pretty funny. Okay, so here's a question that crossed my mind when I was watching that, when um, Devin first saw Jack uh-huh. snooping around. Mm-hmm. Why is he confronting this possible possible crook or bad guy mm-hmm. with the baby in front of him? Because he's confident that he could take him with one arm tied around his back and a baby stuck to his front. <laughs> that was a little... I don't know. Yeah, I know. It, it, but it was very, it was very Devin, don't you think? I thought it was yeah. a good character for him. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, it, Jack totally disarms him and gets in the gets in, in the apartment. But you know what? Devin did cover for the wedding thing. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Considering how terrible he is at lying, <laughs> he seems to have learned. Yeah. Yeah, he's awful at it. He's just awful. Yeah. It comes so naturally to Ellie, and yet... <clears throat> Devin's um, learning. He's learning. Yeah. Um, I liked how Jack came through at the end there, um, talking... Um, oh, to the name? dad, yeah, Mr. Klug. Father to father. Mm-hmm. Um, and And he actually did it. <laughs> Well, he's he actually, got, he can he can see he knows what's important to people he can figure that out very quickly, mm-hmm. and use it. That's a con man's gift, you know. Yeah, and he did it, and it worked. Thank goodness. Yeah, poor Morgan, the <laughs> magnet. <laughs> Again, he had nothing to fear. Casey had a beat on him. Yeah, Casey's a sharpshooter. Yeah, he would have been fine. He would have been fine. I had no worries. But I thought that was pretty cool. I liked it. I liked that they, they, they used Jack that way. Yeah, that was a nice way of bringing him in. I was in the, um, what was it? Oh, in the music section, I referred the music that's going on right then when they're putting the reception together. I put it as Team Walker Bertowski. Team Walker Bertowski. Oh. As Burton Towski. Very, very nice. Yeah. I don't know how many people are going to catch that, but no. I thought it was clever. I was very proud. Well, of I hope as many people caught my mistake this, you know, when I posted the ratings <laughs> for crying out loud. Kathleen, her name's Kathleen, not Michelle. I should know that too because my sister's name is Kathleen. But I was working on something else that involved a Michelle. So uh, excuse me. <laughs> and happened. A little bit of a crossover. Not like we're busy or anything. No. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, gosh, there was something else I was going to mention. Oh, the guy that, that played the dad, uh, the the bride's father, he mm-hmm. is the same actor who's in the direct TV commercial that's everything is gold plated. Yeah, that guy creeps me I out. It. Yeah, he creeps me out. Yeah, but I thought that was. He fun. looks better on Chuck. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that was neat that he was that he got to yeah. be on Chuck. Yeah, I liked it. Mm-hmm. I liked it. It worked. It worked. Yeah. And shoot, there's something else. And as soon as we decide we're done with the podcast, it's going to come to me. So mm-hmm. sorry, you guys missed out on whatever well, brilliant thing I was going to say. I know that um, I really like this episode and I, I've come to realize that I like anything, any of the episodes that um, Lauren and, and Ray do. Yeah. They're my favorite writers. Um, not that the others aren't good. I'm just saying. They have quite a career ahead of them. I could see them being showrunners and then very soon, very soon. Mm-hmm. Having a yeah. show of their own. Yeah. They're fantastic. Definitely be following them. Whatever happens, be following them. Yeah. For sure. So. Well, unless uh, something else comes to us. I guess that's it for the episode discussion. Yeah, I think so. Yep. I'm out. Okay. Well, (laughs) now we'll just have a brief word from our sponsors. So roll it, Gray. Turn your Mac into the coolest television and DVR in the house with award-winning ITV from Elgato. Whether you get your TV signal from an antenna or from a digital box, there's an ITV tuner to suit your needs. Watch live TV on your Mac? 
record a TV show or series, and enjoy the episodes you've recorded later on your Mac, iPad, or iPhone. You can even stream live TV straight to your iPad with the optional iTV app. You can find all this at www.elgato.com. And we want to thank the rest of our sponsors, ielabs.com, makers of the award-winning ActionBlue ABCHD conversion software, which authors full HD videos on regular DVD discs. It even works with HD clips from the iPhone and the new iPad 2. You can get your free trial of the software at ielabs.com. We also want to thank the Movie Morons podcast at moviemorons.com. They are actually highly intelligent and talk about new movies, classic movies, and movies that you may not have even heard of but are worth a trip to the video store to find, and even interview filmmakers and authors, moviemorons.com. And last but not least, serienjunkies.de. Hello, this is Christina Caramel from Serien Junkies TV. Are you addicted to TV shows? Be our guests and learn the latest news and reflections on what's going on in the world of TV series. Well, our show is in German, but maybe you want to drop in anyway? Then visit www.serienjunkies.de and watch out for our video podcast. See you. And we're back. Many thanks again to our sponsors for helping make this podcast possible. And uh, we're going to wrap it up for the news and non-spoilery section of the podcast right now. So if you are trying to stay spoiler-free as we head into the final three episodes of the season, now's the time for you to say goodbye to us and us to say goodbye to you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Spoiler warning. All right, if you're still with us, then you're as curious about what's going to happen next as we are. We have kind of a, I feel like I should have made a chart to put up, you know, with what's coming next here. Okay, so here's the thing. There were several bloggers that were on the set of Chuck last week, and they were filming scenes from the season finale. And some of the tweets were saying that they were on location at a hospital. It's the same one where they uh, filmed Scrubs. And while the bloggers were pretty much keeping the details, details to themselves, there was a fan named Kevin Smith who was there, and he had brought, he made a, a, a buy more out of Legos, <laughs> and he brought it there. Um, I guess he was invited to the set. I'm not really sure how that all went down, but he brought it, and he got a picture on the set. All right, so here's the deal. They're at a hospital, and the photo is Kevin, and I think it's maybe his daughter or a friend, and then there's Chris Fedak. Adam Baldwin, Josh Gomez, Zach Levi, Linda Hamilton, Ryan McPartland, Sarah Lancaster, Timothy Dalton, and Yvonne Strahovski. So we have all of them at the hospital. We have, that means Mama B and Volkov are back. And Volkov, Timothy Dalton is wearing the same clothes that we first saw him in, in the mm -hmm. um, first fight. You know, that little cardigan and, you know, not prison yeah. wear is what I'm saying. He's not wearing his prison garb. But more importantly is that Sarah, Yvonne, is wearing a hospital gown. She's got a fake IV in her arm, and she's got a hospital bracelet, a medical bracelet on. And, you know, her hair's not done, and she doesn't have makeup on. And she still looks gorgeous, and I hate her. But, you know, so there's all these, all these people are there, and there's Yvonne in the hospital. So that got a lot of people wondering what in the world's going on. All right, so remember, we have this photo. So then... EW.com posts and says, let's not be any more cryptic than we have to. Chuck has a lot in store for the fin final episodes of the season. And between the bachelor and bro bachelorette parties going wrong, last minute wedding details and missions and possible tragedy, don't even know where to begin. Says the terrible event takes place the night before Chuck and Sarah's big rehearsal dinner and sadly involves someone we love, says the source. I know your mind probably went exactly where mine did upon hearing this. Does this mean we'll say goodbye to a member of Operation Bartowski? Sadly, it could mean just that. Chuck co-creator Chris Fedak said nothing to quell my fears either. Death is definitely a possibility, he said in an email. Remember, we killed Stephen Bartowski in our penultimate episode last year. And then, in an unrelated but equally squirm-worthy tease, Fedak said the bachelor party hijinks, hijinks that have been teased are only part of the craziness that will occur. We'll say this. One of the party goers, someone who isn't a spy, may find himself being tortured by Ray's men. Um, Ray is in Ray Wise, the lawyer for Volkov. All right, so there's that. Something terrible. And Sarah in a hospital gown. 
So people have been freaking out. And I mean, they've been posting. I mean, we're talking, we're in the hundreds of comments now about this. Um, they can't kill Sarah. They can't kill Sarah. Oh my gosh. If that's the cliffhanger, I'm going to be so. Okay. So from EW again, and this is from this week. It says, um, I'd like some, uh, community or check spoilers. It says, uh, sure thing. Would you like spies with that? On the night before Chuck and Sarah's rehearsal dinner, something terrible will happen to someone we love, an incredibly mo- important member of Operation Barkowski. And it will force the team to confront their greatest enemy, the CIA. So, um, Fedak says, Chuck's team will find themselves facing a CIA agent who's tougher than Bentley, Beckman, and Shaw combined. Okay. So here's what I put together. <laughs> <laughs> the the agent he's talking about is the eraser who we had mentioned previously. So that piece of the puzzle we know. Um, we have the clue about the timing of the event now. It's the night before the rehearsal dinner. And I think at this point we have a pretty good idea of what the pacing is for Chuck. So the night before the rehearsal dinner most likely is in episode 423, Chuck versus the Last Details, with the aftermath carrying over to the finale, Chuck versus the Cliffhanger. So... If I were a betting woman, and I'm not, but if I were, I'd say Sarah is the one that something terrible happens to, and that something puts her in the hospital at the end of 423 and the beginning of 424. That's why she's wearing the hospital gown. And, you know, because remember that scenes are shot out of sequence. So just because they were filming those at the end of the shooting schedule doesn't mean that that's the end of the episode. Um, so it's, I'm speculating that it's toward the beginning, that those scenes are toward the beginning of episode 424, and Sarah is recovered enough by the end of that episode for the wedding to actually take place because we saw a photo of the church where they were filming the wedding and <laughs> that it's some different cliffhanger that will cause us to <sighs> and and hope for a fifth season. Yeah. Because I've also seen uh, a couple of mentions from people who were on set or know what's happening, what the finale is, and they have said that if it's the series finale, fans will be, you know, it'll be fine. A lot of things are wrapped up for fans. But that they also do something that could launch season five very easily. So the cliffhanger is not that someone is dying or, or is dead or presumed dead. That can't be it because the fans wouldn't be happy with that if that were the series finale. No, there would be such an uproar. Yeah. So did, From did, me, yeah. I don't know what yeah. the rest of you guys are going to do, but... Yeah. Did you follow all that? Uh, get, yeah. Okay, got, got where I was going there? <laughs> Only because I have it written right in front of me, otherwise... <laughs> okay, sorry. All right. Sarah in a hospital ga- gown. Not the cliffhanger. Instead, right. I think it's the end of, of episode 23, 423, and the beginning of episode 424. And that they do actually get married at the end of 424. That's... All right. That's my succinct speculation based on all, right. all of that intel. Well, I think that the, the wedding is definitely going to go through as to, uh, I don't know. Yeah. That, I, I don't know. It makes sense to me, but, um, I don't know. It's kind of scary. <laughs> I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. I don't want to think. Yeah. They've just been, Oh my gosh, this whole season has just been so good. Yeah. So good. Um, And now heading into the final three of the season is just, yee! I can't wait to see what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. No, and and now they're they're not going to be on next week. Right. They're rerunning Honeymooners. Right. Preparing Preparing us for the the May sweeps. Mm Mm-hmm. Eek. We'll see. All right. Well, we have the official synopsis for episode 4.22, Chuck versus Agent X, which airs May 2nd. Chuck's bachelor party gets out of hand when some uninvited guests arrive. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ray Weiss makes his comeback. And um, let's see. Chuck and Sarah put aside spy work to have a weekend of debauchery, but Austin's plans for Chuck's big night don't go quite as expected. Meanwhile, Ellie's investigation into her father's computer leads to a life-changing discovery. The episode stars Joshua Gomez, Sarah Lancaster, Adam Baldwin, Scott Krinsky, and Vic Sahai. Now, this, this must be where we're going to get that scene that they were talking about at C2E2, where they were filming in the woods, the bachelor party, or the bachelor party, 
where all so all the guys are going to be there. All the men of true of <laughs> of Chuck are going to be there. Um, so we'll, I guess that's what that's going to be about. Everything goes wrong. Yeah, I saw somewhere that they're going to Las Vegas, V E C A S, not Las Vegas, Las Vegas, okay. which is a campground. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> and okay. then, so what do you think about this life-changing discovery? Uh, is she yeah. gonna is um, she gonna figure out that Chuck is the intersect? That's my guess. Or something about herself. Or maybe she's now an intersect. Or she figures out how to intersect herself. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. Too many intersects. Too many. Well, shit, there's only one. Yeah, but there, I mean, there have been, there have been a couple others. Yeah, but they, it doesn't take, it doesn't stick. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe she figures that out. I don't know. Maybe, gosh. I'm wondering when she has time to do this because she's also supposed to be throwing the bachelorette party. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Well, you know, Ellie can multitask. We've seen her do that. Yeah. He's good at it. She's better at it than Devin. Yeah. <laughs> Although he is getting pretty good. Yeah, I doubt that she would have tried to take down a, a burglar with the baby strapped to her chest, though. Yeah, I, I don't think she would have done that. In fact, I think if she saw Devin doing that, she'd have been, you know, all over him. To say, yep. For sure. Just saying, I know I would have been. I was. <laughs> Devin, what are I'm you screaming doing? at my TV. Put the baby away. <laughs> um. You don't know who he is. Baby. Put the baby away. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> All right. All I don't right. think we have any. Yeah, I think anymore. that's. I think that's it for spoilers and rambling. More than Gray mm-hmm. wants to edit. So yeah. we will wrap it up for now. And if remember, if you wanted to drop us a line, you can do so. Mail at chuckpodcast.com. We look forward to hearing from you. And we'll see you next time, Chucksters. Bye. Bye bye.